and take a two-hour ride with us. As we discuss topics like the next stop and making marriage work. So get your tickets now before the train leaves the station. Thanks for joining us. Take a seat on our train. You just arrived at Let's Stay Together Talk. All right, all right. Welcome to Let's Stay Together Talk. I'm your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo, author Brenda McCain. How you doing, baby? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good. You looking good today. Oh, thank you. Me and my beautiful woman. 22 years, and I still smile when I see you. Do you? Yeah. Good. You should. I be smiling. I'm like, look at my little cutie. Oh, I went from beautiful to cute. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you can you can look at it in a bad way or a good. I'm way. looking at it all good, all okay, good. Because so be we know how it is. When yeah. I see you in the morning, uh-huh. you be like, oh, I I'm say like, you're yeah. cute too. Then I'm lying, but I'm telling you, <laughs> that's okay. Where we got going, baby? <laughs> okay, hey, baby, and hey. hey, my Tracy, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. How you doing today, Brand? I'm doing cute, beautiful, and oh my God, I be lying good. I'm I just know. that girl today. I'm doing this good. morning. Now, brother got to know how to just, you know, sometimes you. just lie to the woman sometimes. Like, baby, you looking good. I mean, you, you, you turn around, and you're like, oh my God. But, hey, baby, you <laughs> know you looking good. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and you wonder why she likes me better. Uh-huh. Hey, right, right. right. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> love me some Tracy. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. I love me some <laughs> Tracy. Well, <Yeah. laughs> right. I'm glad you two are doing good. We have a great show, and we're so grateful that everybody is tuning in back on the McCain train tonight because we have a great one. We're going to be talking about some good stuff, and we want you to join us to stay with us through the whole duration because to see God's glory. We must share our backstory. And tonight, our topic for the six o'clock hour on the next stop is Black Men Leading. And we have none other. He's back, the ambassador for the next generation. Let me say, ladies and gentlemen, the ambassador for the next generation. And that is Sheldon. Uh -uh -uh. You got to say it right, babe. That's wrong. Yeah. Well, what's right for you? It's Shelton. Oh, Shelton, huh? Mm-hmm. Shelton. Shelton. Smith. What did I say? Shelton. Shelton. There you go. I could have sworn I said Shelton. No, Let's you... play the tape back. Did okay. I say Shelton or Sheldon? Don't you dare play that tape you, back. You, you said yeah. Sheldon, but don't be mad because okay. I think I've always said it. That you know what? Too. So yes. Shelton, it's so good to have you here, man. Because uh, <laughs> woo, woo, yeah, he's driving these that train. Two, <laughs> these two together always they always on the side <laughs> of each other, no matter side, what. You know, really on your okay, side. you said Sheldon. I said I say it. This, yeah. Okay, Sheldon. but it's right. Shelton. It's Shelton, it's Shelton. Right. Shelton. with a T. Exactly, the T. and I'm agreeing that I say it wrong with you. Oh, okay, you say it wrong with me. Okay. Yeah. You're I'm agreeing saying. that you're saying it wrong with me. Thank you, Tracy. Exactly. <laughs> but, that, but you know but what? That's ahead. okay. The love in the room is the greatest oh, thing yeah, that's sure here. That's so what I'm I talking appreciate about. It. I thank the McCain train for welcoming Shelton back into the station. And so, as Brenda said elegantly, there is going to be a great show yes, for listeners is. tonight. We're yeah. going to have some fun on the radio tonight. Yes, we are. And we're going to talk about <laughs> the presence of the African-American man. Okay, because he, he's going to debunk some myths tonight, right? I'm assuming that he will. You know, if you know Sheldon, there's something to be debunked. He'll, he'll, he'll do it. <laughs> right, he's going to debunk it. <laughs> so you're going to get right on it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do that. Gonna and Sheldon, you know, we, we talk about the uh, the African-American or the black leader, and you, you hear sometimes one of the, to me, one of the best, the number one African-American black leader, Martin Luther King. You know, you talk about him. You, you, some people will say yay or nay about, you know, uh, Jesse Jackson, you know. People don't like this individual in, in some cases because it's different religions, but Farrakhan is considered a good, you know, a, a strong leader. Yes. And so you have these leaders out here uh, that are doing things, yes. African-American leaders, but there is a myth that there are not really that many good African-American leaders out there. And so we have an African-American, uh, a black man that is doing great things in leadership. So Sheldon, talk a little bit about that. Why is it that there's such of a... A mist, a myth, a myth, mist, myth. a mist mm-hmm. too. Why is there such a, a myth about African Americans or black leaders? Well, I think, Rick, um, as we segue into the topic, I think that one of the uncertainties is that we, as black and brown individuals, men and women that have been kissed by nature's son, I love um, that. there I seems too, so to I'm be kissed. a taboo <laughs> that goes with that. And so there's an expectancy that everything that's black is bad for you. 
black means bad news automatically. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is if an African-American uh, person gets into trouble or does something that kind of conflicts or contradicts who they have been as a pillar in the community, as a pillar in politics, as a pillar as a leader on any level, then the focus and concentration seems to be on that. There's an old adage about going out on top, which I'll attribute to Oprah Winfrey. I was very pleased when Oprah Winfrey decided to retire because she went out on top. She went out as the queen of talk television. She went out as the highest-ranking woman to lead a talk show. And so there wasn't really an opportunity to concentrate on anything that was confrontational or anything that was in a negative that coincided with the brand of Oprah Winfrey. So when we look at Jesse Jackson, we know that Reverend Jackson has had some things to to go on in his personal lifestyle that he's been judged on. And I think that all men and women, humanity makes mistakes. And so we have to get away from concentrating on the mistake. You know, there was a young white kid that was spoon fed of wealth and richness Hmm. that was intoxicated, drove off in a vehicle and killed people. There was, there was people that he ran over. There were people that he was killed. This was on the news and profiled. And the judge made an excuse of fluenza. Wait, no, fluenza yeah, affluenza. Exactly. Affluenza. Affluenza. Yeah. Affluenza. And that yeah. that was the excuse for uh-huh. his behavior. That's not a justified excuse for making irresponsible decisions. Yeah. And so when a black person, if a, if, a, if that had been a 21, 22-year-old black boy from Inglewood, he would be under the jail right now. Oh, and yeah. so there's, you know, the, what's good for one is not good for another. Yeah. And, and, and so it, it's we have to get away from that as society. But I believe that that has a lot to do, a lot, uh, uh, the flip side, the other side of that is that the, the stronger the black man, the stronger the threat. Yeah. And so there unspokenly there there are I believe in speaking truth to power. Mm-hmm. And so unspokenly there is a lot of intimidation by the presence of a black man because there are a lot of stigmas that coincide with us that are truths. Yeah. But you know Shell I'm I'm, I'm going to attack you for a second here. You know we 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 cool with each other so I can do this. Uh the stigma of the black man could be justifiably so because of what's happening to us. We're killing each other so much. So there is a stigma of being afraid of it. Is that something because, you know, as the old Osmond song, you say one bad apple, don't spoil the whole bunch. Is it because of this that the whole bunch is being spoiled because of maybe one or two bad apples that is causing people to have this stigma to think that black men can't be leaders because there's a fear of presence of a black man being around? I, I don't believe that there's things going on in our communities where we are self-destructing, and that has to do with self-hate. And I believe that there's self-hate in each community of every culture. Yes, that's true. And, and so what we, once again, it, it, it falls on the concentration of that negative. Now, that's a small group of people in a community that are doing some detrimental things. You know, that's not a lot of young black men. That's not a lot of young black boys. Every young black boy isn't carrying a gun. Every young black boy doesn't wear their pants sagging. Every young black boy doesn't find prison to be a home. Sometimes kids are looking for prison as a safe haven of getting them off the street. As as crazy as that sounds, if you're locked up, then the next guy, Pookie and them, can't get to you because... You don't have a home. There are a lot of kids on the streets that don't even have a home. They don't have a place to go. So they walk the streets all night. And so, yeah, there are a few bad seeds. But those bad seeds don't define who we are as a culture, as a race. And they don't get to do that. So, but Sheldon, we do have a situation where uh, society as a whole is not looking at the African-American male as a leader. Uh, yeah. They they look at us as you know as as a threat as something to fear, mm-hmm. but they don't look at it as a leader. Case in point, we've got people that don't even look at the president of the United States, who happens to be an African American, as a natural leader, even though he's probably one of the best leaders that the you've ever had. Oh, the, the, smartest, the smartest, the most intelligent, the most, in my most capable president in the world. Exactly. Is it something that we as African Americans, you know, say? 
we understand that people don't want to see us that way. But how do we start reinventing the wheel and seeing ourselves as leaders? Because until we start seeing it, then it, no one else will. Well, I think that it starts with love of self and having self-confidence and assurance in who you are and being able to be the change that you want to see. I think that is where it starts. Others' perception of us isn't going to change until we change. Right. We are the brand, and so whatever we put out there, that's what people know us to be. And I like so that. we have to start and begin to better invest in ourselves. We have to better invest in our communities. We have to better parent. We have to better teach. We have to better equip and educate our young people that they can be who they set out to become, that the only thing that beats a failure is a quitter. A lot of young people don't know that. Yeah. They don't understand what that means. And so until we can invest in who we are and we can better build our brand mm -hmm. and we can better represent ourselves, we will always be misrepresented because people aren't going to love you if you don't show love for yourself. So, Sheldon, uh, you're, you know, you're doing some great things out in leadership. Thank but, you, sir. But nobody, nobody's hearing about that. We'll hear about the, the young man who has a gun in his hand, and the news will report all of that. But we're not hearing about men that are doing great things in leadership like what you're doing. What can we do to get that voice out? We're on the radio now. We're going to get that out today. But what are we missing? Back in the 60s, we, would do, we were doing all kinds of things to get the, you know, the black power. The black. What, what can we do now as an African-American's black people to get that understanding out there that there are great leaders still here. I think our communities have to come together and we have to go back to basics. I think that we've gotten a lot away from a lot of tradition. And a lot of the things that we did once upon a time with the Civil Rights Movement where the Black Panther Party and leaders were comprised of young people. They were comprised of teenagers, 18, 19, 20-year-olds. These were the people that wanted to be the change, wanted to, to be the change that they saw. Yeah. And so until we can get back to that and our, our community leaders, our elders, and, and our, we can take back our communities and we can accept the ownership that we put forth. Because, see, we can't continue to say our young people are lost and not accept the ownership of why they are lost. The generation behind us is lost because the generation before them isn't grabbing them by the hand and doing some traditional things that can help bring them to the forefront of understanding those basics that we, t we were taught. Mm -hmm. We were taught, when I was growing up, prime example, when I was growing up, there was a lady on the block that could chastise any child, right, right. whether it was hers or, or the, the person's around the corner. Yeah. Now, if I chastise your son, and now you come to me in front of the sun and you get into a confrontation with me. Well, that's sending a message to the child mm -hmm. that I can do whatever I want to do. And my mama or my daddy will cut Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so. Mm -hmm. We go to school. And the teacher, when I was in school, a teacher could paddle you with a ruler. Yeah. A teacher could punish you. A teacher could do those things because the teacher was the leader. Right. That was the authority. And you were taught to respect authority. Yeah. You were taught obedience. You were taught to be a leader yourself and not a follower. If you saw a group of kids starting a fight or doing something that didn't coincide with what you were being brought up in in your home, then you didn't go along with that. You well, went the opposite way. Or I guess you were taught that. What about now the law got involved in everything? The parent can't even chastise their own child without mm. DCFS calling. Well, so I think that, that messes up a lot. That messes up a lot. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the severity of chastisement. There is abuse. And there is chastisement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's a and fine a line. <laughs> and, and so when it comes to, you know, the extremity of one versus the other, then you need that bridge. You know, we have to bridge the gap within the generations that are coming behind us. Because there's so many lost young people out there. Oh. There's so many crying out for help. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the disobedience if you really understand the mindset of youth, a lot of the disobedience is a cry out for help. It may not be the way we think they should cry out for help, 
But instead of us, when we see the young person walking on the street, whether we know them or not, if they're walking with their pants down, Mm -hmm. don't be intimidated to stop them and say, you know what, young man, let me talk with you for a minute. Just give me 30 seconds of your time. And in that 30 seconds, say something empowering to him. Because that may be the only positive Mm -hmm. that he's ever heard. See, we don't know. Young people come from a different environment, and it's a different time. And there's good influence and there's bad influence. Mm -hmm. So if all they're hearing is the N-word, and all they're hearing is you're going to end up in jail like your daddy, or all they're hearing is you're going to end up on heroin like your mom, or because you live in this community, you're not going to excel. If that's all they hear... That's, That's all they, they begin to believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Sheldon, let me ask you this question because, I mean, when Sheldon's here, our time goes by so quick. Sheldon, does, talk to me about what it means to be a good leader. What it means to be a good, lead, a good leader is to put out there your experience of and be authentic and transparent. What you've experienced and the wrongs you've done, the bad choices you've made, the poor decisions you've made, the things that you've done that you would like to do different. And mm-hmm. – Put that out there to show that there's imperfections in all of us. In addition, then you come back and you demonstrate how you overcame those things. You demonstrate, let young people know it's okay to make a bad decision because experience is the best teacher and you learn from your mistakes. But resilience gets you back up. When you get knocked down, you're resilient. As a man, there are some things that you need to know. Because as a man, you're automatically a leader. Because at some point, you're going to be a father, you're going to be a head of a household, you might be a husband. Whether it's by plan or whether it's unexpected, these things happen in life because life happens. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to man up. And so being able to transform relationships, being able to be really in touch with your feelings, with yourself, knowing how to love unconditionally, knowing how to be the example that you want, not just talk to talk. If I'm a deacon in church and I'm telling everybody that they should live according to the word of God or they should do certain things with integrity and ethics, and then I do the opposite of that, I'm not a leader. I'm not a teacher. I'm nobody's role model. So when I look at the man in the mirror, am I pleased with who I see? I have to first be pleased with the man in the mirror. Okay, so let me ask you this, Sheldon. What are you doing right now? I know you're doing some things with uh, with your your organization. Talk to me a little bit about that and yes. what that's doing to help young men become leaders and also having great leaders to help them to become great leaders. Man, Rick, that's a great question. Thank you, my brother. There are some extraordinary things going on in the city of Chicago, um, and I'm, I'm great to be a part of this platform to share with listeners and, and communities and families and young people to know what's really available at your back door. These things um, that are going on in Chicago are economically affordable. It's not going to cost you a lot. All it costs you is the commitment of time and the want of betterment. Um, what we're doing is we have a, a program going on in Chicago through our, our Sigma Beta program, and there are young people that come together and they participate in humanitarian service. They participate with academic performance, getting um, set up with tutors if needed, um, understanding the importance of excelling academically. We just did an independent college tour. Our young people explored Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. They explored Harris State University, um, and they explored their culture. There was a learning component of knowing who they are as black boys and what the experience was like at the Dred Scott Courthouse, where Dred and Harriet. Um, Scott fought for their freedom, where Virginia Minor fought for women to have the right to vote. And so they they went, they sat in the chambers, they got a feel for that. Um, as historical as it is, it's still a spirit in that uh, in that arena. Mm-hmm. And you can feel what that was like, a uh, black person being on trial in an all-white jury, knowing you're not going to get a fair chance and how that intimidates one to look. So they saw what that experience was like. In addition, um, we had a young man that was unsecured as to where he was going to go to college. It's, it, it, being a part of our program, you don't have an option whether or not you're going to go to college. The only option is mm-hmm. where you're going to go to college there is a difference and so this young man was not um secured at a university and i prepared him for what he was going to be equipped with for accompanying me on that tour as a result of that that young man was prepared when he um, reached the university he presented his transcripts he presented his act scores he showed his academic performance the week when we returned 
he receives his acceptance letter. Amen. So that is one yeah. black boy out of the south off of the south side of Chicago that will be experiencing the opportunity of higher education. I like how you said that uh, he didn't have the chance to not go to college. It was just where you were going to go to exactly. college. Exactly. And when you mm-hmm. give them that platform of saying it's not that you won't go, I'm already saying that you will go. Exactly. We just need to find out where you're where going. Where you're going to now, go. Now, this organization is what? This organization is the Sigma Beta Club through Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity. Yeah. The Sigma Beta Club is our youth affiliate program. Um, there are about 70-plus young people Throughout the state of Illinois, there's about 55 young people throughout the city of Chicago. Those numbers will be increasing in August and September because our enrollment will open as school resumes. And I've already gotten call from about, calls from about 25 parents that have requested a slot for their son to enroll in the program. The program is phenomenal. Um, I'm, I know I may be partial to it, but <laughs> it, 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 I've seen the results. Yeah. I've seen the results. We have a 98% high school graduation rate. Our young people are not prone to drop out of high school. Our young people are accepted into a university of their choice. We provide them, we set them up with ACT prep. We have them connected with community partners that are very resourceful in helping to prepare them for their future. And so, once again, it's a phenomenal experience for them to learn just who they are, knowing who they are, uh-huh. and what they can become. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, go ahead. In, I'm sorry, how do you get into the program? The way you would enroll in the program is you can go to our Sigma Beta Club Facebook page and you can leave a request with your contact information. Parents can reach out to me at Blue Phi Ace One, that's B L U P H I A C E O N E at Yahoo.com. I can be reached at 773 412 0436. For further details, and when the enrollment opens, there is a criteria in the process. And if anyone reaches out to me, I'm happy to share what that criteria and process is. It's um, basically young people being enrolled in high school, having um, some sort of um, academic performance. It doesn't they don't have to be. The reason why I say it like that, because people automatically think I have to get straight A's, mm-hmm. have to have all B's. It's, it's not necessarily a GPA specific that we're looking for. We're looking for young people that want betterment, because if you have if you have a 2.0 GPA within a year of being in our program, the next year in school, you'll have a 3.0. So you're going to advance Amen. because we don't settle for mediocrity. Right. But right. you have to be up for the challenge. You yeah. have to be up for the challenge. And see, that's what I like because that's how you that's how you bring black leaders. So breaking the myth that there are no black leaders out there, you're hearing one of the black leaders out there. And not only are you hearing what he's saying, he's also saying that not only there's that myth being broken, he is already preparing other young African-American men to be leaders. Yeah. And so when you hear that that's not happening, here's a source right here that is telling that it is happening and that you can be a part of that. Give that organization again and let them know how they can get in contact. Once again, the organization is Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, the Sigma Beta Club, our youth affiliate program. I can be reached. I am the state of Illinois coordinator for Sigma Beta Club programming. I can be reached at 773 773- Four one two zero four three six. You can email me at b l u p h i a c e o n e at yahoo dot com. And please visit our Sigma Beta Club Facebook page. We have a Phi Beta Sigma Illinois Facebook page, and you can see posts of activities. You can see our leadership conferences, our state meetings, and things and workshops that we're doing. We have a phenomenal number of of workshops that we do with our young people. We believe our young people are bold and born to win, and we are leaving a legacy for the next generation. Amen. Hey, Sheldon, you know, one of the things I hate about Sheldon coming on the show is that Sheldon can, he could, he, he what I love about it, show. he could carry a show, yeah, we're but it go goes ahead. so fast. And, you know, we're already through with the segment. You know you're one of our, like one of our resident experts, so Sheldon will be back again. Man, we appreciate you coming by and sharing Thanks, the man. information and being the leader that you are. Keep on doing the things that God is calling you to do in your organization 
and as a man of God and as a deacon as well. So we thank, thank you, you very much. I brother. appreciate it. You guys see us in the Bud Billiken Parade. Oh, Back yeah. to school. We'll be there. Thank you very <laughs> much. Hey, you've just heard from one of the leaders you hear right black now. Man. Black man. Black man leader. Showing black men how to be leaders. Mm-hmm. I can guarantee you that if you get your son associated with anything that, that Sheldon, Shelton, Shelton <laughs> Smith does, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I just say Smitty. Yeah, I just call him Smitty most of the time. <laughs> ah, but uh, that's but true. Uh, <laughs> if you want, if you want to be your child to be success, if you're a part of Smitty's program, your child will be a success. So we'll have that information on our Facebook page, and we'll share it as well. I would say that any organization that you could put your child in like this, yeah. you are setting him up to be a success. Mm-hmm. Thank you again, man, for being a part of our show as always. Much appreciated. Hey, we're going to go to our commercial break. Baby, what we got next? We have coming up next um, POV, Point of View by Donna Terrell. Hi, this is Reverend Rick McCain along with my baby, my girl, my boo, Arthur Brendan McCain, Tracy Brown Howard, and our man Dion. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks. 